Zoom. All right, welcome back to the basement. My name is TJ. We're here for another episode of Blockchain Basement where we talk about crypto, the happenings going on, and a little more laid back uh, environment here, a little more chill. I'm uh, going to be joined by some of your favorite people today. Uh, got some couple new ones. Uh, you have any? You have a handle? What's your handle? Me? Yeah, Decker. I have an Instagram at yeah. Decker Bobbin. It's at Decker Bobbin. At joining us here today, the Kelly Kellum, everybody's favorite neighbor, Drew. There he is, and <laughs> the lovely Ali Lee, Ali B. What's up, guys? Uh, joining us here today, repping the chat, bringing the questions for us. So, as always, if you guys have any questions, anything you want to talk about, throw it in the chat. We're going to be going through uh, some general news today, maybe just some fun conversations. Uh, Bitcoin price is not giving us a lot to talk about market watch wise, so won't spend too much time there. Uh, let's see, Bitcoin, exactly where we left it yesterday. Okay, <laughs> so Bitcoin price not really moving much. We do still have some other things going on in the market. We've got we were just talking, Decker. What were you? What was the question you asked? Literally thirty seconds before we went live, what were you saying? Well, I said I have some stables on the side, and I'm wondering if now is the time to deploy that, or if I should wait longer for some lower lows. And uh, so, if you guys are in the chat, I, I would. I'm hearing this a lot right now. A lot of people that have either never, never bought into Bitcoin. They bought a little bit last time, and they're kind of keeping their eye on it. They're trying to decide is now the right time. And Kelly, what was your response when he said that? There's no way to know exactly if we're at a bottom or if it's going to the likelihood of us being already bottomed and moving up from here. Uh, it, it, it's undeterministic. So this is the perfect point, the perfect exemplification of what the purpose of DCAing is, which is dollar cost averaging, uh, because you're going to you're really going to hit yourself if uh, you miss this opportunity because of the, the the trend lows that we are now. We may not be at the exact bottom, but we're definitely in a bottom region yeah i would agree I, I said basically the same thing i'm recommending to a lot of my close friends and family to at least start buying now uh you know like he said dollar cost averaging or you could even wait a dollar cost average like okay i'm going to put in start putting in x amount and then once i hit january i'm going to put in x amount once i hit you know you can up it but generally speaking i'm starting to uh ladder in right now uh, and i think a lot of other people i'm looking at are doing the same thing and even i would say this if the if the price was to drop, say, like, I think even the, a lot of the more bearish people think maybe we could go to 10K. And yeah, the difference, you know, you're talking a pretty big difference between 16 and 10, but it's not nearly what we've seen from 69 to 16. And so I think right now you're getting close enough in to start getting is undeterministic a word. Yes, it's clearly a word. Sorry, that I mean. Am is I it on or non? It might, be it non it might be non-deterministic. Non-deterministic? But I have no idea. That's just kind hey, of... Hey, sometimes I just make up words. <laughs> well, I just got distracted. I thought... I Although thought I have no idea. No, but think... no, you're right. I think non-deterministic is the correct yeah. way to say it. Let's let's see. Um, it is... Well... Debatable. Technically, it is non-deterministic. Yeah, non but... <laughs> Sorry, well, totally got distracted. But the, but the question the is, in saying that word, did you understand what I meant? That's mm -hmm. really... That's, that's yes. the technology of words is transmitting thought. So if it was transmitted... <laughs> I think uh, that I saw was, that same yeah. episode of House. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he he goes through that very word yeah. for word where they were busting him about because I'm the same way. With my text messages are uh, I leave a lot of words out. I misspell a lot of stuff. It's actually shocking to me when I look back. I'm like, man, how do people understand what I'm, I never do punctuation? <laughs> uh, but he makes that point in an episode of House. He's like, look, the purpose of language is to communicate what's in my head and for you to get it into your head. Did you understand what I was saying? Okay, then the purpose is there. Who cares what the grammar is, what the spelling is, all that kind of Actually, stuff. Actually, so. um, in Europe, it's a word. Hey, hey. there you go. Kel Kelly's just cultured. He's like just well traveled. It's like you know? Sunday with an A. I've lived all end. around the world, so yeah, I'm just trying to transmogify your lives. <laughs> <Yeah>. Transmog. <laughs> transmogify. <laughs> so uh, yeah, another thing, just real quick on the history thing. To, this kind of sums up the state of where we're at in crypto right now. Wait, we were talking about this weird coming up on your uh, computer there. Look oh, let's see here. What do you mean? Oh, I'll show you here. Check it out. Oh, that is weird. Looks yeah. like. Uh, yeah. That's not supposed to be like that. Yeah. It's mm. uh, the resolution is off for some reason. All right, hold on. Let's try this. Quit this. The, the chaos of technology. Yeah, well, it's like you test it right beforehand. It was working, no problem. Chemistry, bro. Yo, yo, yo. How's everybody doing? We're doing great. Does that fix it? There it is. Oh, it's fixed. There it is. There it is. Boom. All right, so uh, BlockFi uh, filed for bankruptcy yesterday and just trying to un understand where things are. So BlockFi is a creditor to FTX that lent to Alameda 
that lent to Emergent, which is a shell company owned by SBF that bought Robinhood shares that were pledged as collateral to guarantee the block BlockFi the loan to FTX that was used to bail out BlockFi itself. Wow. That is the state of crypto right that now. That is undeterministic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think, and somebody says it right here, a snake eats its own tail and then poops in its mouth. When What comes out, if anything, is it poop or is it puke? Who knows? And, you know, this is, uh, this is, this is the state of where we're in right now. One thing I will say to people is like a, a word of hope, maybe, is what we're, DZ and I were talking about on the morning stream is these things are bad, but they're having less and less and less price impact, which yeah. means bears are getting more and more exhausted. Not to say we can't go lower, but I, that's what's giving me stronger and stronger confidence that the bottom is either in or extremely close because good news isn't affecting the price at all. Bad news isn't affecting the price at all. The market is just completely risk off. Everybody's not doing anything. They want to see more confirmations one way or another, uh, which is what we've experienced in the past. There's a lot of boring, which I, you guys know I talked about yesterday. I think ne next year we see seven between 17 and 28 with one rogue pump up to 40, but then we stay in that tight 17 to 28 range for a long time which I know, uh, you know, Kelly and Frank would tell you there's a lot of technical reasons for some of those numbers with volume at those certain breaks. You know, 40 was a big break on the downside. You know, 28 held for a while, you know, and then 17 or you can call 16.5. I use, I'm not talking specific dollar for dollar trade numbers. I'm talking general, you know, 16.5 to 17. I call it both 17. So, um, you know, maybe I shouldn't do that, but that's just how I do it. It's, I'm very uh, macro... Um, long-term focus so anyway that's the state of the current market it's not it's not pretty uh but you know it's it's opportunity this is the people that are doing exactly what decker is doing you have dry powder on the side you're starting to uh in get in now uh now's the time to do that and it just died again but oh 75901 said the human centipede <laughs> you guys ever seen the south park <laughs> oh, episode the, oh yeah the but also south the park episode, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Like the, whole, the actual thing is i've never seen and I you don't want to one. yeah you, have you seen it true I wish oh, wow. I hadn't. Yeah. I've seen all three, dude. Yeah. The, oh, third, God. the third is insane. I don't. I can't even say that. You went Decker. back. For it's thirds? bad, on dude. Human centipede. I went for seconds and then thirds. <laughs> thirds, Decker. It was in like a week period too. One of the things I do want to say though, just on the same note about you know, should you should we be accumulating? Should we not? Uh, you know where we're at now in the market. There are so many people. I want everybody to remember this. There were so many people that were so excited uh, north of fifty thousand dollars to buy, uh, and there's no reason why you could have been that excited at that price and not be more excited at the price right now. That doesn't mean just throw everything you have in it right now because you still need to be. What has this year taught us? Risk management and like safely deploying capital. Uh, and so this the time is now to start DCAing. And uh, on my Twitter, there I, I did share the other day there's a uh a, a accumulation uh basically on-chain metric that shows every cohort of wallet size from 0.1 all the way up to 10,000 plus every cohort is accumulating right now uh so for me that says something very strong about the nature of where we're at in the market but that does also suggest to me that there could be a washout down but that's not that's not what i, I didn't say crash down but a washout that that does not mean don't dca but just Start taking those. Start taking those shots. Do you yeah. know what uh, chart it was you were looking at? Go ahead, Decker. I was uh, just saying, like, who's selling right now? You know what I mean? That's a great like, point. That's what like, uh, miners, miners, yeah, my, miners that have been exhausted for for going yeah. too long. You know, on this hash rate. Yeah, and that's basically what Chemistry Bro said. Only people selling, only forced selling is what's going to take us lower. The only people yeah. selling are the ones that absolutely have to. Nobody's really choosing to right. It's right the now. chart with the, all the colors, and then on the right side, they're all blue. Mayama Lucifer said, do you think DCG doing Chapter 11 could create for selling? It definitely could, oh, but I don't it, think they will. I don't think they will either. They're, they're, they're too tied in with uh, how much... If they if they do chapter eleven before they did that they would have to uh, they would sell a lot of uh, of their uh, because G, uh, what do you call it? grayscale is a is a subsidiary of DCG right. before chapter uh, they would file chapter eleven they would actually just sell off and get capital out of that out of those sales uh, the shares on uh, on GBDC but if that were to happen I do think that that would cause a bit of a ripple in the market to the downside for sure. Yeah, I it, it could. And that's kind of one of the last remaining things out there, the Genesis Capital bankruptcy that could, you know, unwind Grayscale or uh, DCG. That one, okay. You don't know what's, was it, can you see what it's called? 
I can search for it, but I wonder, uh, well, someone said in the chat that Wendy O got shooken out. Man, she's she's just following her game plan. She Tell you what, she did not out. get shaken out. She yeah. she made a calculated decision. I, I didn't say, see the video. Did she really sell everything? Says she sold all her crypto two weeks ago. I think I remember seeing something about it. Yeah. But my guess is, is there's no. I bet you Wendy got ETH at three hundred. You know what I'm saying? Like if she sold now, I'm not spec. I'm just speculating here. But she's not selling stuff. She bought it four thousand dollar ETH. Exactly, yeah. and, right. and I'd have to watch the video because a lot of times when you see those videos, what they're saying yeah. is, "I sold some of it. I'm going to buy it back here." And yeah. you know, she did say she sold almost everything. I think she may be holding her moon bag. So mm, interesting. Maybe that just means she's not. She sold her trading stack. Who knows? You know, I don't. But to their point, yeah, she's not getting shaken out. She's not going hey, anywhere. She's going to be here through the bear market. I and sold everything. We I, sold everything a long time. Ago. I sold every yeah, and then I've been I've been and I've started to layer all my stuff back in now. Yeah. So. But there is definitely a lot of fear of things going lower. We've got uh, the story we talked about a little bit this morning. Exchanges dismiss rumors of insolvency amid, amid rapid speculation. And this is part of what you see when there's a lot of market fear is there's all kinds of stuff on Twitter. I was looking at this last night. Uh, let's see if they have it. Yeah, this one here with these crazy APYs being offered on uh, KuCoin. Everyone's like, oh, this is a this is a bad sign if you're getting APRs of 300%, 200%, which this is not APY. This is completely something completely different. Uh, but you're starting to see basically people are getting scared. This guy after FTX, Celsius, and Voyager. Now BlockFi has just filed for bankruptcy. Who do you think is next? Uh, Dylan LeClaire. Is anyone else getting weird vibes from CZ right now? It's like he's been running the SBF summer playbook. Public projections of strength, talks of industry bailouts while attempting to raise funds. I'm not claiming anything, but the similarities are odd. Uh, and then they, you know, they take a shot, the reference to uh, Nexo as well, which that one it has been on my radar. That's basically another thing, very similar to BlockFi, very similar to Celsius, where they custody products and they give you re a return for holding your assets. Um, so yeah, I, I had money on Nexo last year, and it was it was honestly it was from years of experience in this space, not because I had any inside knowledge. I decided, you know what? Uh, I'm actually going to, I'm going to move entirely off Nexo. And I had to take a, a small bit of a loss because I did the thing that Michael Saylor was telling everybody to do. I, I used some of my crypto as collateral to buy more crypto. And I was like, you know what? I this 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 doesn't feel, I had it for about six months or so. And I was like, this doesn't feel, this doesn't feel like it, the, the winds that the, of the market just didn't feel right. So I moved entirely off, took a small loss and I was beating myself up for about two weeks. And then the market crashed and I said, that was a win because yeah. you know you have to read the technicals and not just live on a prayer and a dream. Yeah, absolutely. Taco here, another one in the office that was using Nexo, and I know a handful of other people. Like you were getting good returns on it. It felt crazy to take it off, but when you see all these other things falling, uh, yeah, holding and custodying your own assets definitely gives a lot of peace of mind. So that being said, Je we both just kind of said we think Genesis will pull through. We don't think D you know DCG will end up filing bankruptcy because it would mean they'd have to you know give up Grayscale, which is kind of their crown jewel. It makes them a ton of money. Uh, do you think anything else notable will experience a insolvency, a bankruptcy, or just kind of go under in this bear market? I'm not talking small exchange you've never heard of or smaller products, something like a Nexo, something like a KuCoin, a Binance. Do you guys think there's more of that to come or have we well, made it through all of the rumored contagion at this point? You no, know, it's interesting. Like even the qu the question there from Miyama Lucifer, how is ne how, how did Nexo stay solvent this whole time? And this goes back to kind of your question, you know, because I, I don't think that the business model is necessarily a bad business model. I think people got way too excited that Bitcoin 100% was going to go above 100K and they were taking all these assets because in their mind it was a sure thing and they were leverage them le leveraging them with very poor risk management whereas nexo nexo didn't operate the same way as we know yet as far as we know as yeah. far as we know they didn't operate the same way celsius did it was the same business model but what it looks like is they were doing how these other uh businesses should have been operating which is you know by by the actual playbook that that says what their business model is rather than leveraging their customers funds to make more money and then the market goes a different direction and then everybody's sol uh and blockfi is just tied up into the whole shenanigans of everything from celsius all the way back to sbf and so uh, i'm not even sure if blockfi necessarily 
did a bunch of the 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 made a bunch of bad decisions. I think they were just kind of collateral from a lot of these other larger institutional bad decisions. If if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and real quick, just to answer, somebody asked if that if this uh, APY thing was real or APR thing was real on KuCoin or just FUD. Basically, what it is, we covered it in more detail on the live stream. It it is a real financial product that they offer, but it's not APY. It's not just lock up your coins and stake it for those returns. You're basically making a future prediction of a price of a certain asset at a certain set of time in the depending on the way that asset moves will affect the return of that bet so it's a very high risk uh you know trade more or less and you're but and if you get it right there's a good return on it but it's not it is clearly and binance offers very similar uh options as well it's what are they it said it's called where do you say it? dual investment it's dual investment is a financial product that's non-principal protected and it has high yield so basically you're investing on it you're you're betting on the spread between two different investments more or less so it's not like it's kind of like options and futures but different and it's a lot more complicated so it's not something i've done a lot of but it's something that does exist and we do know other exchanges use it. So it's not as much of a warning bell of like, oh, look, they're trying, because typically the reason a high APY is concerning is you see an exchange that's trying to highly incentivize people to deposit funds because they're about to run out. So they're trying to get people to put money on their platform very quickly. That's not what it looks like they're doing here. Uh, but it is notable and it is worth noting that that's the state of the industry, that anything that looks the tiniest bit off, everybody's going to start freaking out before they really dig into it. And I think that's... Well, uh, it's, it's that, but then you also have like the other side of it with like yield farming and liquidity pools where you'll see... I remember a year, about a year and a half ago, there was with Elrond, uh, Eagle, and, and uh, I, can't not, I can't remember the name of their... their uh, Mex, I think it was their mm -hmm. other token, and they have these incredible. I'm talking like the first month, it was like thousands of percent, uh, you know, uh, yield that you're, or uh, rewards that you're getting. Yep. And the question is, you know, it's just like you know, like our parents tell us when we're little, you know, some things are too good to be true. It's, it was, nobody's going to give you four thousand percent for nothing. Right. You're they're giving you four thousand percent to offset the risk that you're taking on by doing that because you might make four thousand percent for two months, but what a lot of people don't realize is when you have these two paired assets then there's something called impermanent loss between those two assets, uh, which could leave you with 4,000% growth in one asset, but the difference in the disparity between the value between the two is such that you actually end up leaving with less capital than you came in with. So you have to be very careful about how you're uh, how you're navigating these things, not just taking things because there's 4,000%. You have to ask why. Why and what am I giving away to get that 4,000%? Absolutely. And and. Generally speaking, you have to know if you're getting that, they're doing something even riskier to yeah. get even more. And <laughs> yeah. so you need to, you know, keep that yeah. in mind when you're Revenue. giving other people your funds. Uh, and so this, on that note, I do think because if you guys are asking if crypto.com's okay, if I, I, I just want to know yes or no around the room. Do we think we're going to see another major bankruptcy insolvency in this bear market? We'll call it the next few months. Uh, Decker, yes or no? No. No. Kelly. I think there's going to be at least maybe one more, not massive, massive, but one more uh, that's just tied to tied to this whole SBF sort of uh, meltdown. Yeah. Uh, Drew, what do you think? I can't imagine we're done. No. No? No. Allie? Maybe one more. Maybe one more. So can, everybody I can I change my answer? Can I say yeah? Yeah. I just more? kind of forgot about this. I, for some reason, I somehow forgot about this SPF thing over thanksgiving what? i think there's a lot more <laughs> to happen after you forgot about i know i went in like anti-crypto not anti-crypto but have like you been? i went in vacation mode well when you yeah when you right, well, i'm gonna I'll, wait well, my well, answer i'm gonna go with what you guys said i'm gonna say i'm gonna i'm gonna say yes but no impact no price impact yeah yeah, yeah. so it's gonna something that. that's gonna something big will happen and everyone will be like meh you know we're, we're, we're numb to insolvencies at this point we're dead inside <laughs> So, can, yeah. can I ask what uh, used to punting for the Colts means? Now, I was going to say that. I was like, that's the most random. Razzmatazz said, Kelly sounds like he used to punt for the Colts. I have no idea what that means, what it's supposed to mean. Is it a compliment? Is it a shot? I, don't know. I have no idea. But hey, you know, he's saying you used to be, sound like you used to be a professional athlete, I guess. Hey, yeah, yeah, there you go. I believe it. <laughs> but this is what, this is my question to Nexo because they came out. I basically said the events of the past few months are a painful reminder that in order to generate returns in the market safely, companies must adhere to stringent risk management protocols. 
Here we think that action speaks louder than words and would like to point to Nexo's track record. And th this is where they said, our risk management ensured that we had zero exposure to FTX slash Alameda, Genesis, Gemini, Luno, BlockFi, Luna, UST, Three Arrows Capital, Celsius, Babel, Holdenot, Struggling Crypto Miner, like, and the list goes on. How? I, that's my question is, how, do you believe that they really had zero exposure to, to all the of these things? juggernauts of the industry. Right, that <laughs> nobody, that it seems like everybody had at least some exposure to. Now, maybe you can minimize the hit when it goes down, but how, nothing from all of these things? I just, that's hard for me to believe. That's a lot of the industry that have been wrapped up. Now, maybe they were all, you know, wrapped up in themselves, but Nexo, to be at the size that they're at, how can they completely be insulated from all of these things? I find it a little bit hard to believe. Um, but I guess it's plausible. What do you think? Maybe through third part, like maybe they're like, well, we didn't have direct exposure. Maybe we had exposure to somebody who had exposure to somebody who had exposure to well, this. That, yeah. And to me, that counts as exposure. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. But this goes back to this whole question, you know, even with the proof of reserves thing that everybody is asking for. Uh, and I've seen a lot of people bring this up as well. I mean, that's kind of like an irrelevant thing because it goes back to this, which is what's your proof of liabilities? Yeah. You know, not just... You know, uh, you know, I I didn't invest in his house, but I'm not going to tell you that I own that guy's house who owns his house as a subsidiary. Well, then you still have exposure to that house, right? right? So uh, I, I think people, there's a lot more. I, I I think it's very unlikely that they didn't have some sort of exposure somewhere, in some, some part of their investment web. Yeah, they're just finding a way. Their legal team has found a way to come out and make that statement. Yeah. Uh, do you want to jump? Do you want to answer that at all or not really? Did you see that one, Kelly? I mean, well, I mean, what I can tell you, you guys are asking about the, the crypto jab and Tim and Smay stuff, uh, coffee and crypto. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, I used to be part of that channel. Uh, and you know, I'm still good friends with all the guys, uh, without getting into too much uh, personal details with everybody. Uh, there is just a, a growing shift and change in sort of directions uh and jeb jeb wanted to come back and uh uh retake over his channel and not uh uh not meet them in the middle with uh, uh making them feel equitable equ equitably valuable and all the hard work that they were doing so they decided to uh go off and do their own thing there you go yeah urkel says i don't understand how genesis is bankrupt with failing crypto prices shouldn't it be easier to cover deposits made it's not as much deposits it's some of the loans that they had they you know they made bad loan they had a huge loan to ftx so how are you going to cover a, a massive bad loan so they had a big bad loan that went you know for three euros capital that dcg basically absolved for them they took on the bad loan and you know basically basically took a loan of the same size from genesis and gave the money back to them to cover that bad loan but then they got caught again with another bad loan with uh i don't know if it was directly to ftx or alameda but you know you make some billion dollar bad loans and it takes a lot more deposits to cover it so I see Bankless put out a podcast a few days ago that laid out how the 2021 bull run was just a giant Ponzi scheme based on GBTC and yield farming. Pretty much everyone in crypto has some exposure to everyone else. The industry is just one big circle jerk of loans and yield. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. Like when you look at when you look at what's unraveled from a lot of these big things coming down, it's very clear to see, you know, there's about six major entities that are touching a lot of these things, which is why it's hard to believe Nexo is insulated from all of them. Let me ask you a question though, TJ. Yeah. Do you think, cause one of the things that has been interesting to me uh, since, you know, I've been in the, the crypto world since 2016 and, you know, I was there for the huge, huge ICO phase of uh, 2017 with all the, all the huge number of, uh, you know, altcoin uh, companies and, and projects coming out. Uh, and that, you know, then it changed the narrative from prior to that where it was just Bitcoin and Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then all of a sudden there was these two markets where the, you have the altcoin market and then the Bitcoin market. And this last cycle even, there's been a lot of uh, newcomers that come into the space uh, partially because they don't understand the difference between a, to uh, a token or coin value and market cap. So they buy the very cheap asset because they think it's going to go up to the same price as Bitcoin because they don't understand the tokenomics. But now with all this stuff going out, coming out with, you know, these multiple different exchange uh, collapses, uh, bankruptcies, insolvencies, to uh, Luna, a token itself collapsing all the way to zero. Do you think that this is going to have any sort of uh, effect going into the next bull run where there's not going to be as much of a... Uh, I don't want to say focus, but, uh, you know, 
money that's pouring into altcoins trying to catch up to bitcoin where now people realize maybe bitcoin and ethereum or bitcoin ethereum and cardano whatever fewer coins are going to have more of a focus especially from uh, larger players uh so i would say to that question yes and no like yet yeah, yes it'll slowly slow each cycle the I think more coins will flow into less op or more dollars will flow into less options. So I don't think next cycle, I think we'll still have tons of alts. I think people will still be investing in alts, trying to get higher returns. And as the cycles go on and different alts mature in the market matures, more money gets involved. Obviously it takes more money to, to move those coins. I think we'll, we will see things settle into, you know, the top three to four smart contract platforms, the top three to four money transfers, the top, or maybe two to three, you know, we'll have a couple uh, chains or players in each category where I do think the bulk of the money will settle. Kind of like what you're saying with right now, where you see, the bulk of it's in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and stable coins, you know, in, a hand, in the top 10 alts. You get outside of the top 10, you're talking the other 2,200 coins are battling for that last 5% of dollars in the market. Uh, so I do think with maturity, with regulation, you'll see the big players' market caps really start to balloon. But again, that's just inevitably going to, you know, if you think about the, the example Ben loves is the, uh, the chocolate fondue fountain. And if you think about that, when those big coins get their big returns, you know, what do us DGENs do? We take a little bit of those returns and we go a little bit lower down the thing. And so we'll still see top 10, top 20 coins blow up. You know, then you go a little bit lower down, you take a shot on the smaller alts and then you get profits there and you go on the smaller alts, you know, and the cycle continues. But we, which is why we generally see over speculation at the peak euphoria. It all gets washed back out, goes back down. Like right now is probably close to true market value for what the asset, you know, the assets we have. Maybe not exactly, but close. And then we'll over speculate again in the next bull market when all that hype comes back and everybody can understand like, oh man, we're gonna be able to do this with smart contracts. We're gonna be able to do that. And then reality will set back in. Oh, we're a little bit further away from that actually becoming a reality than we thought when we started looking at the technology. It'll reset and, and we'll do it all over again. And that's you know kind of how markets mature and grow. So yes, I think less coins, but I think it's gonna take a long time, like our, our entire lifetime. A yeah. question for me, Alma Lucifer. I felt like last cycle, the only safe bets were buying layer one protocols. Do you think next cycle will be the same where smart contracts platforms, layer one and layer twos are still the safest bets outside of Bitcoin and ETH, of course? That's my thesis. That's what's worked best for me. Uh, I'll let the other guys jump in because I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it for too much. But yeah, I, I, I think absolutely. And I, I think part of that goes to, you know, why it's so important to either uh, it, no matter what you're investing in, whether it's crypto or traditional or even real estate, it's all about diversification. So having your staple assets that are the larger uh, percentage holdings that are, that are safer, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, maybe other one uh, layer one solution for you, whether it's, uh, you know, Cardano or uh, AVAX, whatever, whatever the thing is that you, but having Bitcoin and Ethereum being the large, larger uh, percentage, and then allowing yourself, you know, somewhere much smaller percentage of your portfolio, uh, you know, let's say the last uh, five or 10%, you have divided between, you know, 10 speculative coins that you only have one or 2% in each of like, you know, whether it's gaming or metaverse or any of those different things, because like even uh, in, now given crypto, crypto man ran from crypto banter, uh, he lost a ton of money on Luna, but one of the, the interesting things about that is before say that that coin never, uh, collapsed, he, he put such a small percentage of his portfolio in Luna when it was nothing, it was just speculative, just very speculative investment, but then it ballooned to be a, one of the majority holdings in his diversification because of how, how what those, those speculative investments, when they do explode that one or two out of the 10 you have, it really, it really starts to, uh, dominate, uh, how large of the percentage share it is in your portfolio. So. At the same time, if it's a major part of your portfolio, then you lose a huge portion of it. Yeah, it's it's a uh, my theory on on smart contracts, layer ones, layer twos. I've had by far the most success with layer one platforms. You know, just you know, I mean, we've hit some different alts here and there, but just net as a whole, you know, as far as dollars I put in and dollars I've taken out, smart contract platforms have been, you know, or layer ones have been one of the best movers for me and uh, the way i look at it i like to buy things that other people can build on right so it's like the example i use is like you're thinking where we talked or we may talk a little bit more today about the google play store or the apple store that's really what i look at a lot of these evm type 
chains as, where if somebody's building decentralized applications on top of it, I'm not betting that this one application is going to hit. I'm betting that the underlaying infrastructure will allow innovators to build and then eventually somebody's going to create an application that everybody loves and it's going to take time we've seen different ecosystems develop we saw the ethereum one do extremely well and now i do think layer twos are going to have a strong play next cycle i mean a lot of people talking obviously matic you know but arbitrum um a lot of people tend to really like going into um next year and beyond for ethereum so Finding something that can compete with Ethereum, I think, is a great strategy when it comes to investing, looking specifically at smart contract platforms. And then what is your favorite smart contract platform and looking at if a layer two is required, you know, and then there's a lot of talk for layer zeros and stuff now, which is, yeah, opinion on, hey, man, you beat me right too. What's your opinion on Adam and Cosmos now that 2.0 got shot down with the governance vote? Yeah, the 2.0, they were trying to, uh, I believe it was going to dramatically increase the, uh, positive tokenomics so to speak it put a lot more buying pressure on the uh, token price so i haven't i haven't looked into it too much since it's gotten shot down it's something i've liked for a really long time on a tech level on a compatibility level and made basically makes it easy for everybody to have purpose-built blockchains because i talk about a lot of times different blockchains do different things and depending on the application you're building you're going to need different trade-offs. So I, I like the idea. It's similar to DOT. DOT's a little bit more complicated, but similar concept that each each application within the ecosystem has a purpose-built chain. Uh, so that's one I hold, and it's one I keep an eye on as well. Uh, but that's what I'm talking about. It's another chain where developers can come in and build on top of it. And you're not betting on the individual application like a step in or like a you know a certain game or anything like that like I, I that's what i think of myself like i used to invest in sun power and sun contract and some of these icos that i thought were the greatest problem solved for humanity back in 2018 but then you realize oh you know the project failed there's so many things that can go wrong with so you got to think these are like internet startups these are tech startups 90 percent of them are going to fail so if you can find the infrastructure layers find the like well, the example that we always use you know in the gold rush find the people building the shovels and the pails and the um uh, picks the picks there you go i was trying to think what is another gold digging tool but um anyway i wanted to i'm gonna make a mention on the atom uh basically i think that atom 2.0 turned down basically because they were trying to do the allocator and the scheduler um all within the same governance vote a lot of the community will probably be more receptive to uh, a not fully encompassing vote. Basically, they're going to be focusing on the allocator and the scheduler first. I think that'll come back. Riddle with puns. You just love to watch me read that and cringe. Yeah, polymath. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Deep brain chain. That was another one. <laughs> It's great. I mean, I'm never going to give up on the con concept of deep brain chain. I'm still holding out on it. So mm. we'll, we'll save it for another day. But uh, earlier today, we were talking, you know, man, that might be a discussion we do uh, one basement day on a slow news day. We were talking earlier about sentient AI consciousness and if it can, it can if it can achieve a certain level of human consciousness uh, or even surpass it, uh, can AI get into heaven was the question. Mm. And it, 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 it spawned some pretty interesting uh, conversations it kept about speed. up all night. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Spirits and souls. Yeah, I won't. We won't get into it right now. I say it, it, it could be a long say, conversation because yeah. we got. I haven't even hit the stuff that uh, is supposed to be the title What's yet. What's up, Taco? <laughs> hey, Taco. Taco. I was gonna have you join us today, but I couldn't find you. I forgot to ask you in the morning, and then I couldn't find you probably at lunch. Mm. But uh, maybe, uh, maybe tomorrow. So, all right, we're gonna move through these stories here. This is uh, one of the big ones that kind of wanted to bounce off you guys. Billionaire Mark Cuban reveals crypto outlook. After FTX, Sam Bankman Fried should fear lengthy stay, or says Sam Bankman Fried should fear a lengthy stay in prison. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, Mark Cuban is a tech billionaire, most known for Shark Tank. He's been pretty, pretty involved in crypto and DeFi, especially since I'd say. 2020, 2021, playing with a few different projects. I, the, oh, I always think of Iron Finance because that's the one he got rugged on early on and uh, was calling for uh, regulation after he got rug pulled. Yeah. But, and then we were all just like, welcome welcome to the family, yep. Cuban. Now, now you've been rugged like the rest of us. You're a true mm -hmm. uh, DeFi degen. So. <clears throat> uh, but here's kind of what he was talking about uh, when it came to D crypto sp specifically and uh, Sam bankman Free. He said, se separate from the signal... Sep separate the signal from the noise. There's been a lot of people making a lot of mistakes, but it doesn't change the underlying value of the applications. 
You still use it for DeFi, decentralized finance. There are all kinds of applications. That's all that matters. Uh, I don't know. And then they, when they asked him about Sam Bankman Freed, he said, I don't know the details, but if I were him, I'd be afraid of going to jail for a long time. Sure sounds like, sure sounds bad. I've actually talked to the guy before, thought he was smart. I had no idea he was going to take other people's money and put it into his own personal use. That sure seems like what happened. So, <laughs> uh, And then they also asked him why he was investing in crypto. Why have I invested in crypto? Because I believe smart contracts will have a significant impact in creating valuable applications. I've said from day one, the value of the token is derived from the applications that run on its platform and the utility they create. And that's Kind of what Kelly was talking about at the beginning of the show. You know, if you were excited about Bitcoin and what it can do in the technology and the use case at $50,000, you should be as much or even more excited for it at $16,000. It doesn't, the technology hasn't gotten worse. It's gotten better. The network hasn't gotten worse. It's got better. The security's gotten better. The, you know, the network's more decentralized. There's more holders. Like so many things about the fundamentals of Bitcoin's network is dramatically better, as well as other networks, uh, you know, like Ethereum and other smart contract platforms that we were just talking about. So, so that's what you need to be focused on is, is the network getting better? Are there more users? Are there more wallets? Are there more applications? Are there better APIs and uh, integrations with mobile and with uh, Chrome, et cetera, which is exactly what we've seen. Generally, we see it happen in leaps and bounds in the bear market, which is what gets us excited that, oh my gosh, look like to just yesterday, we were announcing Fidelity adding spot Bitcoin trading to $4.1 trillion worth of assets under management to their retail clients. Like that's a big deal that will have a big price impact a year and a half from now. Yep. Today, nobody's going to talk about it because it's not exciting. It's not interesting. But when that price breaks 20K again, people will start talking. When the price breaks 40K, when it breaks 50K, when it starts pushing all time highs, a lot of people that have, are going to say Bitcoin was dead for years, like, oh, wait a minute. I, I remember that Bitcoin stuff. Let me, let me put 1% of my 401k. But you know into what? That. You know what, too? We have to split. We have to split this idea of crypto uh, being synonymous with the exchanges that they're on. So people think there's a problem with crypto right now because FTX crashed. In reality, Great FTX point. was, you know, uh, a bunch of people that were actually coming from traditional Wall Street yeah. type quant, quant trading jobs. So the issue, again, wasn't anything to do with crypto it was with uh integrating centralization into a decentralized sort of uh ecosystem and then what happens the centralized uh, point of failure happened and then you know uh created a negative speculation to to sell because there's fear because there's still not a good understanding of the the difference between these entities and then crypto as an ecosystem itself yeah no that's a great point and it's very frustrating as people within the industry, people that work in this, when you when you talk to other people that are outside of it, they go, oh yeah, I heard there was a, another big crypto hack, or I heard, you know, uh, blockchain's failing. It's like, no, 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 blockchain is a failing. DeFi is working better than it ever has. Actually, DeFi has been a shining hero through this whole situation, and had we all been on DeFi, we probably wouldn't be here, right. you know, and that's, mm -hmm. that's what's most frustrating is the chains and the applications work. It's the trusting humans part that fails us time and time again, yeah. and... Uh, and, and generally, as a result of over leveraging greed. Man, I mean, like on that point, like reading through New Genesis's timeline of how they came across uh, FTX and Alameda and mm -hmm. the arbitrage there within, it was all found through being on a blockchain and uh, using AI uh, monitoring systems on that blockchain to, to actually find the smoking gun. So, I mean, like, you know, I am actually really thankful for this overall event. Um, in a kind of a backwards way, but it kind of showed the use case of this technology in, in shining the light on bad actors before they get too big and too controlled. Yep. All right. So, uh, one of the, I got, I'm gonna have a, a pop quiz for you guys. Oh, oh pop quiz? well, it's all right. Uh, well, I'll read the headline. Go ahead. Didn't right, even right. see no, it. go ahead. Cardano among top three chains with highest development activity. This is uh, according to GitHub. We're going to get into, and we've talked a lot on this channel about how, Having a good developer pool, having development on your chain is critical. It is a leading indicator of the overall long-term success of your chain. You, you hear Charles talk about it all the time that you know he's what he's competing with is getting developers on Cardano. If he can win the developer battle, he feels like the rest will take care of itself, which you know generally is true. Like your every application is going to be created by a developer, right? So getting and that's why I don't I don't know if it was on here. I think it was on the morning stream when you talk about Aptos or uh, Sui, those kind of break off of uh, 
Diem, that meta project with the move at, uh, programming language, it's a big deal that so many people already know that programming language, they're familiar with that programming language, and you can basically uh, prospect those developers to develop on your chain. Uh, but the question is, the pop, qu the pop quiz question is, okay, if Cardano's among the top three, who do you, who can who do you think they can name the other two? We're gonna look at all of them here in just a second. Ooh. Other two? Well, I mean, it's I'll know the other second one after that. Got to be ETH, right? Yeah, ETH is it's one of gotta them. Got to be. But the third, I've been honest uh, trying to think. I would I would kind of debate that it was somewhere between XRP, Avax, and mm -hmm. uh, I would say Avalanche or oh man, Matic yeah. maybe. Well, Matic isn't Matic. Well, Ethereum layer two. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait. keep going in. Keep going. Okay, I'm okay. gonna keep going in the chat. So so far in the chat from Mayomi Yusufer, he's got ICP. We we see a Solana <sighs> one. Hellfire spawn says Matic Avax Solana. Uh, Solana. Yeah. There to Ethan uh, Dot. I think, I think you guys slow. are gonna be surprised. You can't look it up. Who me? Yeah. yeah. No, I was looking at names of the. I was looking at names of the. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. just so I can Finance say. Smart Chain. Okay, I mean, but no, any, I any other, yeah, Drew, Avex you or, saw Avex the answer. Dot. Maybe uh, that's I'll my go guess. Too. Did you see the answer um, already, Drew? I saw, but I forgot, and I'm going to guess XRP is the third. So. XRP. All right. Well, I'm surprised. No. So Cardano was number three. Okay. Uh -huh. So US dollar fiat CBDC. No, it's just something we <laughs> talked about earlier in the stream. I'm going to just go really? ahead. Really? Cosmos? Ethereum Cosmos. number one. Whoa. Cosmos Whoa. number two. Whoa. Cardano number three. Polkadot, Kusama, Polkadot, Elrond down there. Central land somehow slides in there. ICP number eight, mm. Filecoin, and H bar number ten. Dude, I am super surprised to see uh, Cosmos so high up. Like that's awesome. There's a lot going on on Cosmos now. This is Dude. GitHub daily development activity. Let's see if it says it doesn't say what day they've pulled this from. I assume it's got to be sometime in the last. You know, like this is yeah. the 29th is the tweet, so I assume this is pulled from uh, you know today or yesterday. But uh -huh. wow. um, and so we'll get into the story a little bit here. Uh, let's see. According to GitHub data, Cardano ranks among the top three chains in terms of daily development. Look at that. Developing the gluten belly. Yeah, that was the same hormonal there. belly. Yeah. Eat healthy, folks. Uh, let's terrible. see. Twitter accounts. <laughs> on, yeah, okay. On Monday, 555 commits were pushed across 64 GitHub repositories by 110 authors that were 923,000 additions, deletions, JavaScript. So Cardano is an imp. Marlo, blah, blah, blah. Let's see if we... Okay, so what's this? This is just the commits. Cardano Node saw 31 commits as reported by you today, the Cardano Node version. Hedera, the layer two scaling... So oh, not Hedera. Hydra, not Hedera. A scaling two solution on Cardano received 28 commits. So anyway, just I just wanted to mention this since we've been talking so much about development. This is a pretty interesting thing to keep in mind. And it's again, this is not an end-all be-all. The technology is not what determines the price. Generally speaking, in crypto right now, it's all about hype, whether it's an NFT project or a new blockchain project or a new application. You know, the things that have the most media attention and the most hype tend to be what moves the price the most. But long term. These metrics really, really matter. Uh, and now again, this is daily. These could change. You know, who knows if there's a there's probably a reason most of these commits are getting pushed for Cosmos right now. We know they're undergoing some updates and some proposals and some votes and some of that stuff. So these are probably things people are trying to get in before a major change. Um, no surprise, Ethereum's number one, far and away. Uh, Cardano pushing to number two. Like it's they're pretty close. Uh, like if you look at this graph here, um, you know. One, two through four, there's not as big of a, you know, mm -hmm. Cardano, Cosmos, pretty close, and then Pod Polkadot and Kusama, also pretty Decentraland. close. Decentraland, somebody was saying that in the chat. I'm shocked to see that even in the top 10. To Me too. Honest. I'm shocked it's over Elrond or ICP. Or even like, yeah, Alga. Like, I don't even know. Yeah. You, do you guys notice, though, which I think is, maybe maybe I misread this entirely, but didn't Elrond recently do a rebrand? Yeah. They did. They're so, Multiverse X. So are they just, they just haven't really uh, harnessed that yet and just <laughs> gone with the full branding? or Because <laughs> why are they still... Elrond. Yeah, okay. that's a good question. And I don't know how that works when it comes to like GitHub's and, you know, and they mm. can be gamed. That is a good point, Taco. Yeah, they can be gamed. Um, you know, like Tron, that's one thing before Tron used to rule the GitHub repository when it came to developments, but a lot of it was just back and forth. You know, uh, let's right wait. So basically, when people are submitting uh, proposals or like for Bitcoin, a Bitcoin improvement proposal, you can submit stuff all day long. And if it's no good, it just gets rejected. And that's one way you can kind of uh, spoof a GitHub is you could send all kinds of bad, you know, or just meaningless suggestions that looks like you're getting tons of commits, 
but they never get implemented, so they're they don't really matter. It's kind of like, it's kind of like wash trading. Uh, I mean, it's not like wash trading. That's that's what I was thinking. Similar yeah. concept. Yeah. Developers least, wash trading. Yeah, it's you know develop you know to make it to make it look like you've got more development activity going on than you actually do. But it's pretty easy to spot that. It's a pretty short term game, I would say. Well, it took uh, a, it took a while for for everyone to to find out all the Solana developers that were. I mean, there was a one developer that made up like twelve different teams. Well, it was it was two brothers, wasn't it? Yeah, and it they had they had brothers. Sunny Aggregator, Saber, all those things, and yeah. and they they that that goes back to the 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 comment earlier about the giant circle jerk that twenty twenty one was yeah. because there was uh there was all this fake engagement and, and and wash trading and and i mean so much just perpetuated by uh you know things that were all tied to ftx in some way and solana and all it's it's just i i wouldn't invest in solana if you gave me money <laughs> um question mr mcgoover said any recommendations for preventing a hold on your funds when you transfer money from your bank into an exchange trying to buy more crypto but exchange have a minimum five to ten day lock on funds crypto being withdrawn after a usd deposit mm -hmm. no being so withdrawn no, I, I, well i have an issue some people do some people don't like i have to wait on gemini five to seven days after my funds clear in order to withdraw it to my exodus wallet so i know what he's talking about i know some people say that they don't have that issue but it, i guess it depends if you have crypto in your no, wallet and no this is going to be yeah so if you're depositing new funds into an exchange it, it almost doesn't matter what exchange it is. It, they're going to hold it there for five mm -hmm. to 10 days because yep. base, just so you know, that goes they back to Swift. Yeah. I was going to say, that's just the, what you're talking about is the slowness of the traditional banking system. The they don't actually get your money for that long either. Yeah. So they are waiting for it. Be, imagine uh, like, if you think about Swift, like a blockchain, imagine it having a five to 10 business day, you know, transaction time. Block that's time, basically yeah. what we're dealing with when you're dealing with the Swift or ACH or whatever. It's now, a traditional wire, wire transfer, essentially. Right. And so yeah. they get it and it comes into their, their ledger, but they have to verify it has to move around. And, you know, they might have it for a longer or a little sooner than they're telling you they do. But yeah, you generally, you have to let your funds season so they can make sure they're actually there. Because what would happen otherwise is people would send a wire. If they made it available immediately, people would immediately withdraw and then they'd go cancel the wire. And you know Coinbase would be on the hook for the difference, and that's why they don't they don't do that. Mm. Mm. Uh, but to Decker's point, if you have money in there already that's seasoned, and it's you know there it's confirmed that the money is in there, you know, and then you deposit new money, you could withdraw from the old stack or mm. whatever. Like if you have Bitcoin sitting in there, like oh you have two thousand dollars Bitcoin, you put a thousand dollars in there. Since you have the money there, they'll let you withdraw it. But again, it's kind of a weird thing because some banks, well. To your point, it's most it's most exchanges, but um, somebody said about it being a Swedish or American thing. But it also I, has to do what I've noticed: Coinbase is tightening their security protocols, uh, and be, like if you if you log in through a VPN or through a different IP that you're normally on, then they'll force force you to re-verify yourself in order to get the funds. Otherwise, you have to wait like three to five days, and that's more be you know as frustrating as it is. In reality, they're doing it to protect your funds. They're doing it to make sure somebody wasn't maliciously just hacking into your account and transferring something off. So you had time uh, to to navigate that if, if it was bad. So it's a little bit of a you know <laughs> yeah. balance of of things. And the new typewriter said, if you want a workaround, you can use a Bitcoin ATM. That'll work on withdrawals. Not it won't work for. He was asking about when you deposit and then having to wait five to 10 days to get it back off. So if it's a, if you're trying to just withdraw, there are workarounds, like especially uh, if you want no KYC withdrawals, on, you know, you have to do small withdrawals. But that, Well, you can deposit them into my account and I'll give yeah. you twice as much back as you yeah. have me. Oh, the old, yeah, uh, the old Vitalik play, you know, just give me one ETH, I'll give you two. So uh, speaking of taking profits, that's what we all want to do. Obviously right now the Bitcoin price has been trading sideways, but we've We've created BitLab Academy. I'm going to have Kelly show some of these new indicators that we've got working for you guys. He, he's been working really hard on some tutorials and some new stuff in BitLab Academy. So I don't know if you can, here, I'll just hand you this and you just go back one tab and show like this is just going to be a quick overview. There's obviously there's a lot to look at here, a lot of colors and fun things. But um, uh, so, yeah. Uh, first thing is go to bitlabacademy.com and you'll see on here this pop up. Go ahead and sign up uh, for this email list, and you uh, not you're also going to be entered for a chance to win half off access to BitLab Academy for life. Okay, mm. and in addition to that, here's the uh, indicators that we have built in there. I'm actually rather than just showing you this page, I'm going to go directly into 
Tap to the left. Just go directly into Trading View and show you what the heck these are. This is the BitLab trading suite, and these four together is a, is a trading stack because these are meant to be stacked together. And the the flagship is this uh, top one here, the BitLab Market Intelligence. Uh, then we have Significant Movement, BitLab Relative Extrema, and Hidden Volume. So to give you a very brief sort of overview of how this works, uh, if, if you're very new to trading, uh, one of the strongest things that gives you indication of forecast ahead of a move is when you have these things called divergences. And that's when you essentially are having signals from like the relative strength index, stochastics, momentum, essentially stuff behind the charts so indication that there's more buying power than the than the the current market move is is showing or less buying power than the market move is showing so for instance you see right here we have these tags on the top and the bottom these tags are essentially showing and i can expand this uh for the full you can actually see exactly what they are uh these tags will show you uh, here, there we go. So this is on balance volume. Down here we have bullish divergence with MACD, RSI, momentum, on balance volume, and relative extrema. So essentially, what this is showing you is reading a number of different indicators across uh, trading view, uh, from momentum, stochastics, RSI, uh, the buying power of a move or the lack of buying power. Uh, so you can indicate whether or not the the price is likely to move up or down, or if it's likely to sustain continuing going up or down. Uh, in addition to these. Uh, uh, divergence uh, indicators as you can see there's also this colorful EMA ribbon this uh, as this changes this is signifying also uh, an increase or decrease in uh, the strength of that move so anytime you start seeing the color change it's indicating that there's a likely a move to come up now you see this right here this is a significant movement this indicates uh, floors and tops for uh, you know whatever short term and long term trends we're in so as you can see anytime your your mouse is backwards in mine, TJ. Oh, yeah. uh, you you can see anytime that this is red, this is also met with a with a little trend top. And anytime it's blue, it's with a, a you know a shorter shorter or longer term trend bottom or a floor. Uh, and so once you couple this along with these divergences, and then one of my favorites, this relative extrema. I'm just going to zoom this in. What I want what I want you to notice here is that there's this. Uh, shaded in wave here as well as these histogram bars and as you can tell right here these histogram bars are, are are very far outside of this this shaded in wave so if i just put a bar right here a vertical bar i can tell just by looking at this this is saying that the the momentum of the of this move was very far outside the bounds of what it should be and the price is likely going to come back uh to a, a standard deviation a, like a relative mean so just by looking at this if i uh go here there we go so we can see we can see right here is where we were this move as it was pushing up this was not a sustainable move because this was very far outside of this this uh this band and what happens as soon as as soon as this uh basically starts to snap back the price actually flattens out here okay and similarly right here this was a, any move that was down right here this was a false move down because this very similar to this this was pushed way far down to the downside uh, uh way outside of this this wave suggesting that this if i was worried oh my god the price is dropping should i sell i would not have sold in this moment because this is a uh, this is an unsustainable move and this is likely going to snap back and continue going back up to the uh to uh, uh a more bullish direction or or not continue that bearish move so there's a lot more stuff that we're going to yeah. be doing on this uh we're going to be breaking down how to use this and uh, the strategy uh, I'm going to, you know, compare it to some of the other indicators we've used before, Lux Algo, Market Cipher, and really show you how you can create a really standalone, incredible trading uh, trading strategy using these BitLab uh, indicators because they're it's using a lot of the similar same data that big money. I'm talking hedge funds, smart money. This is the type of data that they use in order to signal whether or not they should be entering or exit trades. So it's worth learning this different strategy over these other very simple buy sell signals signal sort of uh, indicators that are out there. Yeah, absolutely. No, it looks great. We've been putting a lot of energy into it. We're doing 
the best we can to make it easy to see, you know, because like Kelly was saying, it's obviously it's taking a ton of information and trying to display it in a way that's easy to recognize. Okay, hey, you know, we're going outside the shading. That means we're doing something that's different than what it traditionally would do or should do, you know, from a statistics and a probability standpoint. So it helps you hedge your bets uh, and trade a little bit better. So if you Kelly, got... Kelly, uh, go I have a, pr a price question. Will it go up on the monthly... Uh, there, there is a lot of pricing changes. I did see Curate uh, asked if veterans could get a discount for the BitLab. So if you've been a part of the BitLab for a while, there are uh, some incentives, obviously, for you remaining with it and getting things included. There's a, there's a lot of different things with pricing, whether you can buy a lot of these indicators, you can buy some of them standalone. Uh, if you are an Academy member, yes, there's a pretty substantial uh, discount if you are a member of the actual Academy and the courses. So it's made to all go together. Uh, as he mentioned, we're doing a lot of tutorials on on those right now uh he's been shooting some frank has been shooting so i know he plans to shoot some uh tomorrow so <laughs> he said i mean a u.s veteran well, oh oh oh, oh. Hey, that's pretty funny i'm actually a u.s veteran as well as u.s air force uh, uh karate uh, go ahead and send me an email kelly at hitnetwork.com yeah mm. and, but it, what i wanted to yeah. say is there's a lot of good really really good information in there and now's the time to be getting involved with this so if you guys want to learn more whether you're brand new to crypto or an experienced trader go to bitlabacademy.com and there's a lot of good information in there you can learn from uh, the discord as well we're really getting that going so now I would say if you're gonna start using some of these indicators now's the time to get in there because a lot of people are starting to play with them and ask questions and we're doing uh, kind of real-time support on a lot of this stuff so uh, get in uh, the bitlab discord get and and buy these indicators and mess with them because uh they're they're working pretty well for us so far and uh, i'm not somebody who day trades a lot and if it can make sense to me i think it can make sense to a lot of other people so uh you know we're gonna be we're gonna be on a uh using this a lot next year because we think we're gonna be staying in a pretty tight range and the number one way to make money in a boring market you know is just is just riding those things and taking two percent here three percent there two percent here and just get consistent winning trades is the goal you know and you don't have to it doesn't have to be big money either you can start with a few hundred dollars like or you know like per trade i, I mean i guess it's relative i guess of what big money is but uh you can start small is my point and work your way up, uh, which is what a lot of people like to do. So uh, we did get some breaking news. I haven't confirmed this. I did see the tweet from Watcher Guru. Well, we broke like 100K Bitcoin. <laughs> I wish it was something <laughs> positive like that. No, it's more. Uh, let's see. It's probably this right. Yeah. Uh, Coinbase will no longer be supporting XRP. I don't know if they said wallet, but um, is that what you saw? Coinbase wallet or Coinbase the exchange? I think it's wallet. It's uh, not su supporting XRP or Bitcoin cash. Interesting. Well, I mean, it makes sense. You can't buy XRP on Coinbase. Yeah. Low, low. Well, when they say they're not supporting it, they mean like... What yeah, it means people... you can't hold your coin there anymore. Well, but then what are they going to do? I'm, I'm curious what are they going to do with the people who have XRP yeah. on their their wallets. Oh, let's look at it. All right, here's the story. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Coinbase wallet will stop supporting BCH, ETC, XLM, and Whoa. XRP. So that's Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum Classic, Stellar, and Ripple. Uh, crypto wallet plans to support or stop support for the four tokens on December 5th but added any remaining funds would still be tied to users' existing addresses. Uh, so there you go. Starting so, on, yeah, they're just not going to allow new people to add more. Yeah, if they're you not going to allow you to create a new yeah. wallet, basically, or create a new you know wallet within that uh, software for XRP. So starting on December 5th, no longer support the major token. This does not mean your assets will be lost, said the announcement. Any unsupported asset that you hold will still be tied to your address addresses and accessible through your Coinbase wallet recovery seed phrase. So it still is in that wallet. Um, so there you go. Who's uh, crazy enough to be leaving XRP on a Coinbase wallet? I, well, I, I mean, Coinbase, Coinbase <laughs> wallet, I mean, that's what we recommend a lot of our people. The, wallet, a, the wallet is the a completely self-custody wallet. It's yeah. not the exchange. He's, they're not talking about on the exchange. They're yeah. talking about the Coinbase wallet. It's a completely separate app. I know. Uh, and it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the, uh, what do you say? It's the moral of the story. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just kind of. You just don't trust yeah, Coinbase. I just, was, yeah. after they delisted it. Uphold still has it. Ledger still exists. I'm good. You know. Yeah. What I mean? So you hold you hold your stuff on Ledger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what would you? Uh, does anybody? I don't have any to worry about. Um, Decker, you do, right? What? Like, where where should you put it? You know. What's oh, XRP. The yeah. Oh, Exodus. I love Exodus. Exodus. Yeah, that's a great. I answer. will say Exodus, and then Zum Zoom Zum Z X U M M is a decent XRP wallet. It's a self custody XRP wallet, mm -hmm. and then Exodus is a really good one. I mean, I'm 
slightly partial because the the founders are from Nebraska and I went to college in Nebraska. I didn't, Go Huskers. I talked with the founders before. Go Big Red if anybody's a Husker fan. I've but had, anyway, I've um, had porn. and I like I like Exodus and it's self custody. So whoa, whoops. Mm, nice. <laughs> it's self custody. And so, you know, that that's just what I use. So yeah. I have a couple questions. Yeah. Um Digital Pencil <gasps> said, How do you sell crypto for fiat without going through an exchange? Newbie question. Uh you pretty much have to go through an exchange. Unless Well, I mean, you do like that peer or to just, peer. Uh, peer to peer, you know. I mean, there's things like I, I think doesn't uh I mean there's still local bitcoins, you know, if you really want to go peer to peer. I was looking at some of that the other day, just out of curiosity. Um, the guy at Subway. <laughs> yeah, and 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 uh, I mean that's we were talking about uh Bitcoin exchange or uh uh yeah, Bitcoin ATMs, not exchanges, but yeah, Bitcoin ATMs it's for small amounts, a lot of them I, I don't know what the limit is. I think it's six hundred dollars for KYC on a lot of them. Some of them might be a thousand. Uh, and again, if you if you don't care about KYC, it's a totally different story. Uh, but generally, if you're trying to not go through an exchange, I would think it's because you don't want a KYC. Mm -hmm. um, JM Bullion. If you want some <laughs> yeah. gold, that's send true. It to JM answer. Bullion. They'll take your address. How much you want to send? They'll yeah. ship to your house. There okay. are things that do appear to peer. There are uh, Bitcoin ATMs, but generally speaking, unless you you need to have a pretty strong motivation for not using an exchange, I would say. Otherwise, you know, just use the exchange. Yeah. Um, I was looking for a question here. Another earlier, one from Crypto Thorn. What's the best way to make sure a project is not a scam? I know do your own research, but I find Reddit advice, Reddit threads saying on both sides saying it's a rug pull or the project is great. Any advice? My only advice to that question, I mean, basically, yeah, it is. It really, I mean, it sounds so cliche. It's do your own research, and it's really research more. Dig, dig, dig. Read as much as you can about it. You, a lot of these projects, uh, they have telegrams, which a lot of them can be toxic. Some of them have Discord. So I don't know if you're looking at NFTs or you know micro caps. You know, a lot of them probably are rug pulls, and you're just trying to get out before the rug gets pulled. Um, if you're looking at top, you know, 200 projects. Uh, look at the motivation of the people fudding it, uh, and you really just have to determine for yourself. Get examples. Get this is here's this is kind of contradict not or uh, may not be common advice, but this is I think something that everybody. If you're new to crypto, find your core two to five people that are gonna that are on the crypto journey with you, whether they're friends, whether they're family, coworkers, somebody you just kind of know, and it's like, look, this guy's just as crazy about crypto as I am, and then you can start having conversations with them about it, dig into things together, be like, hey, I read this, what do you think about that? And you just start that dialogue. I mean, it could be us here in the basement, we can be your crypto friends, and that's I, I, it's why I like to do this, because I think having this outlet for people is great, but if you can get somebody locally, a, a good like for me, it was you know Brian and I from uh, you know that you guys see on a lot of the different stuff we do around here. Um, you know Ben and Justin Williams when they were first getting off, you know like they were oh my gosh, have you heard of this crazy new pickle coin? You know like it's <laughs> got two hundred percent you know yield. You know we should get in on it. Like oh no, we're losing all of our money. What do we do? You know and it's like it's hard to tell sometimes if something is legit. Like especially okay if you're in the top ten, your things are gonna be. I mean, that's the thing. People call Ethereum a scam, right? Yeah. And if you read the right Reddit, Ethereum is a scam or a rug pull or, a, you know, and um, I, think, you know, I, think, I don't think that, but your only person who's going to be able to make that determination is you based on all the information you take in. And that's the only advice I can give. Yeah, I, I think, it, you know, that's... We do a few lessons in in the uh, it was a real thing by in the, the analysis sort of course on, on BitLab that we're going to be putting out, and that is that's uh, making sure that you you do do uh, you do 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 uh, mm -hmm. fundamental analysis. You know, you need to uh, at some basic level. Uh, even if you're just starting, it, don't worry. The journey gets easier because a lot of these different terms and phrases, it becomes more. You become more accustomed to it. It's like a new language, right? And as you become more familiar with it, it becomes easier to dig into this quantitative and qualitative analysis and understand mm -hmm. what is the tokenomics of a project and how does that make sense and what's the what's the release schedule and the emission schedule and how how is how is the diversification of the portfolio when when the when the when the, when the coins are initially released and when you once you start looking at different projects and seeing how things that are successful have been run, when you see something that stands way far outside of that, right. or it goes back to what we were talking about with yield earlier, if something just way too good to be true, it probably is. You know, so it, it just goes back to just doing that analysis and becoming familiar yeah. with what looks normal. That's great, and really, it's what 
kind of what he's saying in essence is just stick with it. You know, it's funny. We were talking about this. I saw, I was reading a thread either this morning or last night that was talking about like, Oh, how do you get up to speed quickly? Or how do you get alpha on YouTube? And he was like, okay, go follow these 10 make, bring a, make a brand new account. Go follow these 10 channels, consume this, watch it on one and a half, do it this many times a day, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, it's a commitment. You have to decide. He's saying, take notes, write things down. And that's how you're going to learn things. And I, I, you know, I was like, golly, I can't imagine doing that, you know, to get into crypto. But when I was first getting involved, like that's what I did. I read and I read and watch and hear and consume content about crypto every day for about five years straight now. And it's over time, you just start picking it up. You know, it gets easier and easier. like we're you recognize like I didn't know what tokenomics was. I didn't even know what bearish and bullish meant when I started in crypto, mm -hmm. you know, and now it's like you use all of those words like they're second nature. You use, you know, I, you, I, I just by default can recognize certain chart patterns now. I'm like, oh yeah, that's looking pretty bullish. And it's like, why? I, I don't know. I've just looked at this thing a thousand times and I've, it, the back of my brain remembers like another three times that it looked like this and something good yeah. happened afterwards. Chart just, vision. Yeah, it just starts to become part of you in second nature. So uh, that's what I've been doing for a while too. Just hours and hours of crypto YouTube every day. And yeah, and if you're if you're into it, it's it's fun, right? And if it and it's not a job, it's not work. You know, when I read the 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 thread, I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds like a lot of work. Take like especially taking notes and listening to things at one and a half, which I know a lot of people do. I will say though, don't only follow one person. You know, yes. and, and, and like you need to follow people that have somewhat different uh, differences of opinion. You know, if somebody's if you're watching a channel that's very bullish all the time, it's great. Listen to it, but also find somebody that's very bearish all the time. Absolutely. So you can look at both different paths, and also you know how to plan for both different paths. That's that's good advice. I would say follow people that follow some maxis. Maxis have a lot of really good information, a lot of really good long term stuff. Uh, but you know, unless like, you're I, only going to watch BitBoy, <laughs> then, then you're okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I would say, yeah, watch BitBoy, watch blockchain, watch a lot of channels, watch BitBoy, watch blockchain basement, watch NFT alpha, watch Frankie. Can't no, <laughs> <laughs> those are all our channels guys you and, have to just watch our yeah. stuff, but read the book. Yeah. Catching up to crypto. Read yeah. the book, catching up to crypto. Read the book, the Bitcoin standard, read the Bitcoin white paper, watch, uh, money as a system of control. Watch a lot of Andreas Antonopoulos video. Like there's just, just keep going. And like, it's only so much you can do. And if you try to, my number one thing is don't freak, don't FOMO good or bad. Don't, mm. you know, like don't freak out that you're going to run out of time because you're not like you, you have plenty of time. This isn't going anywhere. It's going to be here for the rest of your life. So just, you know, adjust your life to it. Don't in a way that's sustainable. Don't quit your job today to go all in and then realize two months from now you're out of money, you know, mm. but say, okay, I'm going to put in a little bit more every single day. I'm going to study you know, 30 minutes a day. Hey, I'm going to, on my drive, I'm going to listen to this kind of video instead of music. Or when I get home, I'm going to watch this before I do Netflix or just try to do positive, productive things, especially right now, especially when everybody's screaming, you know, the sky is falling for next year. I mean, I think you'd be hard pressed to find somebody that's bullish on 2023, generally from a macroeconomic perspective. So the number one thing you can do when things are getting bad Pull, pull your people close to yourselves, invest in yourself, save your resources, and be prepared to take advantage for the amazing opportunity that's in front of you right now. Because anytime you're seeing things contract, it's it's an opportunity for you to position yourself for the next expansion, which I think is what we're going to see uh, moving in right now. So I just need to last until 2024, 100%. Just survive. Right now, If you're especially if you've been in crypto for a while, like that is the sentiment for people, the crypto industry right now. You just got to make it through next year. You know, uh, Gainsey, he's great for uh, tweets and entertainment. You know, he's talking about how, you know, how depressing and how poor all the crypto bros feel right now and how we're all going to feel like kings again in 2025, laughing at everybody, telling them they're poor again, which is true. Like, it will be, it's very feast to famine in uh, crypto. And we're in that, that famine stage right now where we're saving everything we can and anything we're not saving, we're trying to invest at the bottom, you know. So it's, we're not spending on lavish things right now. We're, we're, pinching every penny hey, can i say something about that too yeah too. i think and i don't mean to be mr hopium here but i really think that this is is as crazy and dark as the crypto ecosystem feels right now because of this whole year has just been a year of reckoning i think that uh you know clearing that out and having the smallest amount of regulation come in within the next you know year and a half or so i think that we will have 
I think we have a, a strong possibility, strong likelihood of some some of the floodgates opening on some of the things we've been waiting on with the big institutional players because a lot of the the development uh, has been going on in the background for years with these players that we don't even know about, whether it's the Walmarts or the Amazons or the uh, whatever Apple. You know, Apple just uh, integrated uh, uh, crypto in their Apple Pay. I've got a big prediction it's for next year. going to be a biggest bull run ever. Everybody says it's diminishing returns. I think we still have one more doozy. I do too. I think, I think the next bull run will be will will break the diminishing return cycle. We'll have greater returns in this next bull run than we had in the previous one. Uh, and I think it's going oh, yeah. it's going to be dramatic. I think. And my big prediction uh, for 2023. I mean, I've already said a lot that I think it's going to be the year of regulation. But a bi a major bullish prediction: Bitcoin ETF gets approved in 2023. Oh, that, that that's going to give us that pump. Yeah. That, that, that could that, be that, that could be the 40k it could happen in the middle of the year and that could be our 40k you know our pump up towards that 40k or it could happen towards the end of 2023 you know maybe december maybe this time next year we get a bitcoin etf approved we're a few months outside the having we pump into the having everybody says the having's priced in you know like we start pushing all-time highs again uh towards coming up to the having um that seems a little early for that but i don't know we'll see We'll see. But Bitcoin ETF in 2013, uh, I do think will be the major, major uh, catalyst. This is after we get Gensler out of office, right? When <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I'm, I think next year will all be about crypto regulation, whether it's CFTC, whether it's SEC, yeah. whether it's new regulation, digital asset commission, like all of that will get hammered out next year. And then it's game time after that. So, um yeah, I think that's pretty much all we have time for today. I got a few more stories, but we'll save it uh, save it for another day. Mm. Chat, always love chatting with you guys. Uh, welcome in, e LJGG, first-time chatter. Thanks for the subscription. Chemistry bro, I mean, if we get the drop to 10K and then the top out of 250K, that would be a pretty huge bull run. I agree. I'll take 250K. I, I wouldn't be mad at that. Yeah, all those big players looking to hire crypto people last year will come into fruition by the next bull run. Thank you, thank you, Dirty Gary. Love you, basement. We have uh, Hit Gaming on. Um, I didn't see them on, but I do see Bear King oh. ETH. He might be on here. Let me see. Y'all yeah, go find... get some sunshine today. It's a beautiful trying to day. Join yeah, if you're go. trying to join BitKet, uh, you do get a little warning there. Don't worry about that. You can just X that out. You don't have to use a VPN or anything like that to log in. And any uh, IPs that are logged before uh, the beginning of the year, you should be fine to use. So don't worry about that. Uh, feel free to sign up if you need another link. Uh, just check out any of our stuff. I'm sure we've got it all over the place. Uh, Killwood Beats, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a first time chatter. Have a good day, Smith. Riddle with puns. Love you guys. Always love you, do. Hellfire Spawn. Evan Coons, love the basement dwellers. Basement for life. Yeah, Hit Gaming, our life. Oh, they're about to go in four, three. The raid. See you guys. It. Later, dudes. Bye. Adios. <laughs> oh, oh. You still have to hit, right?